a lot of the people giving financial advice, all they know is a bull market. Yeah. You see, they were born, you know, just prior to 2008. They're now probably, let's say, 25 years old. They're financial planners, real estate brokers. And all they know is the S&P keeps going up. Don't fight the Fed. I mean, they're idiots. But unfortunately, without financial education in our schools, you can't blame them. But they don't know what a, a, what a bear market looks like. And they don't know what inflation looks like because inflation has made them rich. Years and years ago, I, I had a benefit of studying with a man named Mark Buck, Mr. Fuller. He's considered a futurist. And he built a geodesic dome. So Fuller was a futurist. John Denver wrote a song about him calling him the grandfather of the future. And so for three years, 81, 82, and 83, I studied with Fuller during the summer to how to see the future. I mean, next year sometime, I'm coming out with a book called The Raven. And the raven in Greek mythology was the uh, god of prophecy. And so here's this book here, Rich Dad's Prophecy, just to prove I back up what I say. I can prove I said this stuff. So I said the biggest stock market crash is still coming. And this was after the 2008 crash. And the reason I could predict that the, 2000, the 2008 crash was just a prelude for the bigger crash coming, which we are in today. I mean, even China's crashing today because they never fixed the problem. In fact, the whole problem is that the global economic system is rigged. It's called the central bank system. You know, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, stuff like this, this whole system is rigged. So Fuller, Fuller passed away in 1970, 1983. In 84, his book came out called The Grunch of Giants. Grunch of Giants stands for Gross Universal Cash Heist. It's how our wealth is stolen via our money. And that fit my whole internal belief system. But in 1984, as I read Grunch of Giants, and that's how I can write books like Prophecy. And the way you know I'm not just blowing smoke today is go get the book. And so what happened, 2008 crash, and then what that set up the biggest bull market in history. But it was based upon fake money. They just kept printing more, using more debt, because as you know, Brian, money is debt. If we don't borrow money, money doesn't exist. So money comes into existence because every time you use your credit card, take out a mortgage, buy a car, that's when money is created. <laughs> and then in 1913, they, in America, the Internal Revenue Service was created, the IRS, because money cannot exist without debt and taxes. <laughs> now, when real estate goes down, it takes all the economies of the world with it, like you know Australia, one of my favorite countries, ships a lot of supplies to China. And there, Australia was booming because China was booming with real estate. And so in 2021, when it collapsed, that means Australia collapses more. But that's why I think Australia locked the country down also. Everybody has to stay indoors and all this. I personally think they're afraid of civil unrest. Hmm. Hmm. And so I think that's why, you know, COVID appeared um, in you know, September 17, 2019, our repo market collapsed. And the repo market is the shadow banking system, as they call it. You don't see that market, but I'm watching the shadow banking system. And when the repo market collapsed in September 17, 2019, voila, COVID appeared. In Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is this book here, you know, I said such blasphemous things as your house is not an asset, Ooh. the rich don't work for money, and savers are losers. I got attacked like you have, I'm, you've been attacked, I've been attacked. But man, they came after me because I was stepping on some big toes. When you say savers are losers, that's the bankers. And, you, and when you say the, the rich don't uh, work for money and all this stuff, I'm going against education. And the, my theme on this book has always been what the school teach you about money. Answers nothing. A few months ago, they called parents terrorists in America because they actually dared to challenge the education system. They, they want to know what the heck they're teaching the kids. So these parents are in these, these huge rooms and, you know, what, what do you call them, PTA meetings or Parent Teachers Association meetings. The parents are up and down and they get labeled terrorists. So something, you know, Brian, it's, it's, I'm afraid it's going to get worse. 
That's why I write, that's why I speak. And we're seeing it a lot now with these big inflation numbers, Robert, and these are scaring people. Most of the people born on the planet today have never experienced inflation like this, and they're scared of it, rightly so. It's also a different type of inflation than maybe we saw back in the 80s. How do you tell people that they should get their heads around what's happening and should they be panicking? A lot of the people giving financial advice, all they know is a bull market. Yeah. You say they were born you know, just prior to 2008. They're now probably, let's say, 25 years old. They're financial planners, real estate brokers. And all they know is the S&P keeps going up. Don't fight the Fed. I mean, they're idiots. But unfortunately, without financial education in our schools, you can't blame them but they don't know what a, uh, what a bear market looks like. And they don't know what inflation looks like because inflation has made them rich. But the M2, the money supply is so huge today because they're trying to prevent the balloon from cla collapsing. They're doing, they're desperate. Yeah. So when you take financial advice, be careful on their age. Yeah, no, it's true. Like you said, most of the financial planners have never actually been through a bear market. Um, they've never experienced or even been alive to remember what inflation was like or some, what some of the ramifications are for it. So this is something that can be really debilitating, that can just crush people that are already living on the edge because they've been encouraged to, to rack up debt, et cetera. So is this something people need to be very concerned about? And what can they do about upcoming inflation and even this upcoming crash? Well, I think the, why is there inflation is they're trying to prevent the collapse. And Jim Records, you know, he's one of the smartest guys I know. He says, prepare, we're gonna collapse. <clears throat> and as you know, people don't understand, most 98% don't understand this. The dollar is a reserve currency of the world, which came about 1944 with the Bretton Woods Agreement. We can just keep printing money, but the rest of the world's collapsing right now. And everybody depends upon the US printing, 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 printing. But that's why I watched China and when Evergrande came down in 2021, the biggest real estate collapse in history, bigger than 2008. And all of a sudden they locked people down with COVID. You know, I'm going, I've seen this story before because it happened in 2019. They're desperate, Ryan, they're desperate. They're looking for anything that can save, stop this thing. But, but you know, every time they said to me, don't fight the Fed, I'm saying, don't trust the Fed was my state. You know? <laughs> Why would I trust those SOBs? They're essential bank system. The Rothschilds and all those guys control them. The richest families in the world control the central banks. And you said you pulled the, you pulled the curtain aside. It's like the story of the Wizard of Oz. You know, you pull the curtain aside. There's a little guy back there called the Fed chairman trying to keep the um, economy from collapsing on but they're gonna keep printing and printing and printing until the thing is destroyed. I've been, I've been saying that for years, but I was the whack job or the you know, chicken little on the outside, some whack job without a, I don't have a degree in finance. You know, I have a, you know what my degree is in? What? Oil. <laughs> so I went, I went to US Merchant Marine Academy in Kings Point, New York, and I, this is in 65 to 69, and I studied oil. In 1965, I read this book here. So I go to, I go to military school. Most of my, I think 100% of my teachers were men, not women. And there's a very big difference on the way men teach men and women teach men. And so one of the things going on today is off the subject, but socioeconomically, more men are raised by single moms today. But, you know, our academics are taught by women. So one of the benefits or Bad, bad results is I, I go to military school, I'm getting yelled at, screamed at. They're all men teaching boys. I'm 18 years old and my economics teacher, instead of having me read, you know, Adam Smith and Malthus and Keynes and Ricardo, he had me study Marx, Hitler, Mao and all this because in military school, the motto is know your enemy. And so I studied Marxism in 1965. And this book is only like 50 pages one of the most powerful books ever written. Hmm. But the trouble is most school teachers haven't read the book. That They don't know they're Marxists. They're not bad people, please hear me. But economics, as you know, Brian, is kind of a philosophy. So it's like Christianity is different than Buddhism or Hinduism or Muslim. So economics is kind of an uh, economic religion, to keep it simple. Yeah. So when you read Marx, 
most academics, like my poor dad, who was a PhD from Stanford University, who was a mar Marxist, but they don't know it. They're not bad people. They're not bad people, but without financial education, they got no choice. They believe in labor unions. They believe in the tax the rich. They believe the abolition of private property. You know, that's all Marx. If you read this book here, it's in here. So that was in 1965, an eight-year-old kid getting yelled at and screamed at at military school in New York. And in six or seven, I, I hitchhiked from New York to Montreal, Canada to see Bucky Fuller's Geodesic Dome, the U.S. Pavilion, the World's Fair. And now I'm confused, Brian. Do you know what I mean? I, I have my poor dad was an advocate of Bucky Fuller, and my rich dad was a capitalist. So I'm I'm trapped between two worlds, and and that's why I wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad. And you've recently written the Capitalist Manifesto. Yeah, I wrote the Capitalist Manifesto in response to the Communist Manifesto, and actually I wrote uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad in response to the Communist Manifesto, answering the question, why don't we teach money at school? It's not a mistake, Brian. It's not a mistake. Because what Marx predicted has come just 1848. Okay? He, said, he said communism would take over America specifically, or the capitalist world, in two stages. So stage one happened in 1930. In 1930, the Frankfurt School out of Berlin sent teachers to Columbia University Teachers College. That was in 1930. So, it, so communism invaded America through our teacher system. And that's why most teachers are Marxists, like my poor dad. Not bad people. You know, right. they, they think they're doing the right thing. Right. But yeah. they don't know how to make money. They want a pension. They want all the benefits and all that other stuff. They belong to labor unions. And what Marx says was workers of the world unite, join a labor union. So my poor dad, well, my, my rich dad was anti-labor. And my poor dad was the head of the teachers union. But you know both sides so well, Robert, and that's why you can kind of explain both of them. And yeah, they, yeah, they're not bad people. Yeah, but they're just maybe confused or they've never lived in the world of business. They lived in academia, right. but these people are teaching our children. The economic system is a little bit like a religion, a belief system. And yes, you have to I just call it economic religion. Yeah, yeah. So capitalism is a religion and Marxism is a religion. You know, so is fascism, you know, all those things. So when you can get it from that perspective, you have more options to choose which one you like. But the biggest problem today, again, is we have no financial education in our schools. But this is what's worse. I'm in New York City, 65 to 69, going to, studying oil. I drove tankers for Standard Oil. I invest in oil wells today. I don't investigate in oil stocks. I want the real stuff. You know, the Fed cannot print oil. So when Biden took the Excel, uh, the Keystone Pipeline XL, whatever it is, off the off the list, oil went from thirty dollars a barrel to one hundred thirty dollars a barrel in a few days. So in other words, inflation went through the roof. It wiped out the middle class and the poor. But a guy like me who invests in oil wells, not oil stocks, I made so much money because when the price of oil went up to one hundred thirty today, I think it's one hundred and five. I'm creaming it right now. Unfortunately, it's killing the poor and middle class because they can't put they can't put gas in the car, they can't buy groceries, and then they can't afford to shop. So I see all the clothes on sale everywhere and all this, and that's what's predicted in here. That, that's how I see the world from very economic point of view, but real economics. A, a lot of the really smart guys on Wall Street too, they don't understand what I'm saying. Do, do you know what I mean? They don't. They're they're inside the machine. Yeah. They're inside the, the whole grinder out there. And uh, so, and this was book number two, I could, if I could show it to you, it's this flow Quadrant. Oh yeah. And this the four people in capital, or money, all throughout the world. You have employees, small business, self-employed. You have big business, 500 employees or more. And you have I, it stands for insider. It doesn't stand for investor. So I always invest from the inside. And people say, well, isn't insider trading illegal? Yeah, for these guys. It's legal for these guys. The other thing is taxes, you know, like Ocasio-Cortez, she's, she's a communist from New York. She says tax the rich. Well, the only people that pay taxes are employees. They pay 40%. This is global. It's pretty much set by the central banks like the Rothschilds. And then S 
the small business, the small entrepreneur, you know, somebody's not going to become an entrepreneur, they pay 60% taxes. So the small entrepreneur is crushed all from the start. But big business is 500 employees or more defined by the Internal Revenue Service, the tax department, is 20%, and insiders pay zero. So when I was about 18 years old, my rich dad pulls me aside because this is my poor dad here, go to school, get a job. My mom wanted to become a doctor. <laughs> I'm going, heavens, no, mom. You know, you have to be smart. S stands for smart. She said, you're right, you won't, don't be a doctor. <laughs> and B stands for big business entrepreneur. This is Elon Musk. Uh, Bill Gates and all those guys, and I as an insider. And let me say again, because I studied oil at the academy in New York, military school, when Biden took the pipeline off the line, I got richer. Do you know what I mean? Oil went from $30 a barrel to 130 but unfortunately, it destroyed the middle class. And I think that's what's going on and why I think this book is more important today than ever before. It's not a mistake. You know, Bucky Fuller taught me what Buckminster Fuller said, argue with the artifact. So don't listen to what I'm saying right here. This is the book I wrote. It's called Who Stole My Pension? And it's written by myself and a guy named Ted Sedell. So if you're like 50 years old right now and you have a government pension or an IRA or a 401k or whatever, RRSP in Canada or a super in Australia, I'll get this book here. Because the purpose of money was, as Fuller said in his book, Grunge of Giants, the purpose of the financial system was to steal your wealth. And that's a pretty radical statement. And so that's why I said I was a very confused young man, having uh, a rich dad and a poor dad, and then studying with Fuller, who my poor dad loved, and my rich dad had no idea who he was. You know, I, I mean, so I had to listen to two different points of view. Again, economics is basically a religion. And the question is, which religion do you want to follow? Tax the rich or don't pay taxes? Put, it, put your money in an IRA or don't put any money in the stock market. So I own no stocks except the companies I took public. I'm a capitalist. I invest from this side and this side. These guys cannot go public. You know that, I know that. The companies are too small. You said I doesn't stand for investment, it stands for insider. Can you talk yeah. about that term, insider, and how can people become insiders? Well, there's many ways. It's, it's the moment you go into, uh, I love real estate because the moment you go into real estate, I'm using debt. And the moment I use debt, I pay no taxes. <laughs> And all the other financial planners who advise these guys here, the 401k, RRSP, superannuations, they tell you get out of debt. On this side here, I'm using debt. It's called OPM. And so the moment I go into real estate, I'm an insider. So I actually control, if, I don't care if it's a little one bedroom, two bedroom house or whatever it is, I'm now in control of the deal. I'm the manager. But when you give your money to an a mutual fund, then you're hiring a manager. And supposedly an ETF is, it's automatically managed for you. But to to do what this site does, when I was I was about 18, I had to make, my, make up my mind, which one was I gonna be? Then my education changed. It always changed. And so I, I do have a college degree. It's a bachelor of science in oil. <laughs> and it made me a rich man. <laughs> but you have to choose your degree. But I also, what made me rich is I also have my rich dad's information is I invest in the oil well, not the oil stock. And I'll say it again. The Fed cannot print oil. 